In this quiet town of Enfield, Connecticut, there's a serious problem with heroin. Heroin was manufactured in 1898 by the Bayer Pharmaceutical Company of Germany and marketed as treatment for anyone that had morphine addiction. Today, it's become a very popular drug of choice. However, its popularity has become a risk to others. Heroin has affected the minds of adults young and old by disabling them to use their full potential to become a productive citizen. All the articles that you read discuss how a young adult just overdosed from heroin, an adult was caught with 200 bags of heroin with intent to sell, and how a teenager died from the use of heroin. The question is, how do we stop this from happening? In this documentary, we will show you statistics about heroin, how social media plays a role in all of this, and how the citizens, committees, and subcommittees of Enfield, Connecticut are joining forces with the police to crack down on this issue and try to help those who are struggling with this addiction. ETC was established in about 2001. Um, we received some state funding in about 2009, um, and then we went after the Federal Drug-Free Communities Grant um, and was awarded that in 2012. We are about to go into year five of that grant. We actually um, started meeting as the North Central Opiate Addiction Task Force in March of this year. Um, we have been meeting every single month, so we met in March, April, May, and June. Um, starting in July, we moved into subcommittees, so we have an enforcement subcommittee, a treatment and recovery subcommittee, and a prevention subcommittee. The Enfield Together Coalition has continued to meet also um, because we focus on other drugs besides just opiates. So we focus on marijuana, prescription drugs, and alcohol. Um, so we've continued to meet on a monthly basis also. So the most common ones that we see are depression, bipolar, or what we used to call manic depressive, anxiety disorders, which is the most common one we see in the secondary and causes a lot of students not to be able to come to school, um, eating disorders, uh, substance abuse, self-injury, and the attention deficit and hyperactivity. So um, with depression and bipolar, depression is not always something that someone is going to deal with for the rest of their lives. It can just be situational. They can have a clinical depression. We see that, unfortunately, in our secondary students, especially that have gone through like a really bad bout with Bono, something like that will cause a clinical or a chemical imbalance to happen. As always, we see sadness, anger, violence, different rebellious acts. Truancy is certainly a big one. And then with the bipolar or like I said before, we used to call manic depressive. We're seeing the mood swings, the rapid or mixed cycling, and these are people that are at much higher risk of suicide. We do vary our presentations or meetings every, um, every time, so sometimes we focus on a specific substance, sometimes we focus on a specific issue. Um, this one being that we're informing and educating the community on what our, our youth are telling us. We hold most of our meetings here at the Town Hall. Um, our larger meetings are down in the Enfield Room. Um, the large uh, North Central Opiate Addiction Task Force meetings are here in the um, Town Council Chambers. And some of our other small um, subcommittee meetings, such as the enforcement um, that we have on, on the ETC, we hold at the Country Diner. Um, we try to come out, go out into the community to you know, engage other people and make it as convenient as possible for um, other community members who are involved in the coalition. Social media is playing a pivoting role in heroin use. It has given the appearance that everyone is doing it, providing instructions on how to use it and providing access to the drug. Outlets such as Instagram show very disturbing images of heroin use. Instagram allows you to post photos and videos for all of your friends and family to see. 
Hashtags such as hashtag junkie fam and hashtags junkies of Instagram are seen in the following pictures of syringes, drug dealers posting about how much money they made in the day, and people shooting up. It raises the main question, why is Instagram even allowing this to happen? Instagram should be blocking this kind of imagery and reporting the people posting these photos. Social media has played a negative role in society by almost enabling heroin users. When an addict is alone, they'll turn to drugs for comfort. They'll post these disturbing kinds of photos online to fill the loneliness that they are feeling. Technology keeps growing every single day. Everything is becoming a lot easier to access, making drugs easier to obtain. There are legal internet pharmacies selling drugs online to the public. One of the sellers offered a warning on the Mexican black tar heroin. Watch it, please. We don't want an overdose on our hands, which is really easy with this stuff. We want everyone to be happy and have a great time, so start small. In 14 months, the Enfield Police Department have charged 50 people with felony drug charges after cracking down on this issue in town. Seven people have been arrested, two of them from Enfield, Connecticut. I think heroin is widely abused nationwide, especially here in Connecticut. And I think the reason for it, first and foremost, is the, the people that uh, sell this poison to our children have come up with a way to make it affordable. And um, it isn't like the old days where you had to inject it by needle, now you can sniff it. You go up to Hartford and buy it for $5 a bag, it looks like it's innocent, affordable. People use it, they get hooked on it, and it's very difficult to rid yourself once you're addicted. So um, that's one of the reasons. I think another reason is a lot of our uh, people that are using heroin got started with legitimate prescription medication from doctors. Uh, they're prescribing pain medication, oxycodone, things like that. When the doctor says no more of that, people get used to it. They want to feel that rush, that sense of high. So they go to Hartford or Springfield, pick up a bag for three or five bucks. It replaces what they thought the heroin would do. And before you know it, they're hooked. When you see someone in, in this state, that's a, a pretty high level of heroin or, or opiate in their system. Someone that takes uh, the doctor prescribed painkiller, that's not going to affect you like that. That's, that's a pretty high level in that person to, to make it that bad. Mm -hmm. you're, what, I mean, this is v very, very high, high tolerance that, that he has, and he has a lot on board in his system. So is your question more, did the hospital cause this? But if you but if you leave if you if you leave the hospital yeah. and if you've been given something and then you leave and you go out and you pick up heroin on the sure. you know on the street then you have that much more. Sure. Yep. That, that was. Yep. Well, we will sit. I don't want to jump in real nope. quick. Nope. Please um, do. There's two times that we that we typically find heroin overdoses what, that we respond to. One is when there's bad heroin, meaning like I said before, there's fentanyl mixed in with it because they don't know exactly what they're getting. The other time that we go out for these people that are down and just about dead is when people go to rehab and they get out. Um, they, they stay clean in rehab. They may go two, three months. But when they go back to use, they use the same amount that they use because that's all they know. They use the same amount that they were using when they went in. In 14 months, the Enfield Police Department have charged 50 people with felony drug charges after cracking down on this issue in town. Seven people have been arrested, two of them from Enfield, Connecticut. Well, certainly the most important side effect that we see are the, the consequences is the loss of life, which is the most uh, tragic event. Um, not only for the person that loses his life, but those folks all have uh, brothers and sisters, mom and dad, so that's certainly the number one. Um, their life becomes obsessed with possessing the drug, getting the money for the drug. That's all they think about, that's all they do. And when they can't come up with the money, it motivates them to commit uh, very stupid, violent crimes, uh, armed robberies of gas stations, convenience stores, and just to get enough money where they can buy their next fix of heroin, and then the next day, they've got to find another way to come up with that money, and unfortunately, it's always a criminal way. So I think those are all consequences of heroin use.
According to the School Health Survey report, in 2005, 4.3 of students had used heroin. In 2015, there have been 416 heroin-related deaths. The number of people dying in Connecticut from drug overdoses continues to skyrocket. In 2015, more than 720 people overdosed, with heroin-related deaths climbing at alarming rates, according to statistics by the State Officer of the Chief Medical Examiner. Even before the epidemic really got to where it is today, our department uh, knew it was coming. So what we did was we focused uh, two year-long investigations just with our department and did uh, heroin, predominantly drug sellers, uh, in November of both uh, 15 and 14 where we arrested a total of 50 individuals for narcotics, predominantly heroin, predominantly sale. Uh, we made really good cases, strong cases. A lot of those folks are serving time in prison now, but we also recognize as soon as we put a few people in prison, because of the opportunity to make so much money, there's so many more people willing to take their spot. We also recognized early on that a lot of our investigations didn't stop at the town line. They, they led us to Windsor Locks and East Windsor. So I reached out to the chiefs of East Windsor, Windsor Locks, and originally Suffield, and we created the North Central Regional Narcotics Task Force. So the Enfield Police has officers assigned to it. We work in that unit with East Windsor officers and Windsor Locks officers. And we focus on the drug trades, but specifically heroin and sale, not only in Enfield, but the surrounding towns. Because we realized that if we just did it in our town, it didn't stop our residents from going to Windsor Locks or East Windsor. So uh, by working in conjunction with the other towns and sharing the resources, uh, we've been very successful in making heroin arrests, not only in Enfield, but the surrounding towns. And if we can continue to keep up that type of enforcement, it makes it harder for the drug dealers in North Central Connecticut. And we push them out of our region and um, keep the focus up. And that's what we've done. It's been successful. It's a new program. It's only been running three months. But so far, it's uh, done beyond expectations. So we're very happy with it. We do have the Enfield Together Coalition, and we also um, are running the North Central Opioid Addiction Task Force. Um, both we really emphasize prevention. Um, so our message to the community is that if we, you know, prolong the onset of youth using any substance, whether that be alcohol, marijuana, or prescription medication, um, if we can prolong that as long as possible, they're less likely to become dependent of that substance. The particular dealers will put their stamp on a particular brand. So if you bought that brand, say it's a, a Disney character or whatever it is, um, and you want that same quality, you ask for that same brand. Of course, there's no quality control where this stuff is manufactured, uh, sanitary conditions. You don't know what exactly is in there. And certainly the drug dealer is concerned with one thing only, how do I maximize my profit? So whether he's mixing that heroin with fentanyl, which is a very powerful drug by itself, um, is leading to a lot of the deaths that you're seeing across the state. There are about 2,000 drug overdose deaths in Connecticut between 2012 and 2015. The 723 deaths last year were more than twice the number than three years ago, most resulting from heroin, cocaine, or other drugs such as morphine. We have some flyers and handouts and giveaways and outreach with providing information to the community. Um, and then building and enhancing skills, um, I know that it's really important to 
build the skills within a coalition, to train, to get everyone educated, to really get everyone on the same page. And, and I feel that we've done a, a really nice job with that, of offering up CADCA trainings. So we have attended learning communities that from DEMIS. Um, there's webinars that are available that we've promoted before. We've had activities around building logic models and sustainability. We've had other types of seminars or speakers. Um, if somebody is in the area, we've promoted it. And then enhancing um, access and reducing barriers, the medication drop box is enhancing access to get rid of your medications, um, providing a place for people to bring them, making it easy for that to happen. Um, and, then re and then also um, reducing barriers. Um, we've also been able to translate some of our materials into Spanish. We like to encourage parents to talk early and often to their kids. Um, you know, parents don't realize that they're the the greatest protective factor? Well, you know, it'd be nice if, if there were certain things as our children grow we didn't have to talk about like drugs and, and violence and alcohol related deaths, but you know the reality is these things exist and they're not going to go away if we don't talk about it. So I think, uh, you know, taking the time to sit with your children, explain first of all what happens when you take these drugs. If you start talking to your kids about substances, they're not going to start going to use it. Actually, they're going to be, you know, open that conversation with their parents is very, um, is very powerful. Um, if you start early and often, um, your youth feel a different connection um, and they feel more comfortable to come to you when they have different questions. So if their friend starts using or is drinking alcohol at a party, um, if you haven't started that dialogue with your youth, they don't feel comfortable to come talk to you about it. Um, so we really try to encourage parents to start early and often. Um, we try to have different meetings and seminars to um, have the parents come so that way they know what type of subject is okay for them to at what certain age. So, you know, when you're talking to a kindergartner, it's going to be completely different when you're talking to a senior in, in high school. So what subject content's appropriate for um, what age your child is. These are drug dealers. These are thugs that take their, they just want to make money. So they'll go in a dirty, filthy garage and mix that, that poison with anything else they can to maximize. So you need to explain to them the dangers of it. And I think most importantly when we're talking about heroin, it's not uh, like drinking a beer or something. Uh, people, many, many people report using it one time and they're hooked. And it's very difficult to really think about anything in life that you can do once and not ever stop, but heroin is one of those things. And I think you point out the, the medical problems, the, the, your health issues, the overdose issues, and not to mention then how uh, everything else goes south, your job, your relationships, your friends, and you focus solely on getting the money, no matter how you're gonna do it, to feed that habit. So you're gonna end up um, dead or in jail. Those are your two choices. So that conversation needs to be had early. Um, some people suggest if we have that conversation, we're putting the idea in the heads of the kids, and the truth is, if you don't have that conversation, they're gonna have it out on the street with their friends, they're gonna see it on television, in the movies, and um, I think you need to have that with them. The sooner the better, and uh, hopefully they'll make the right decision. A new drug law passed in 2016, PA 1643, will take effect this October. This will limit the amount of opioid drugs that can be prescribed by a practitioner, seven-day supply for minor or first time for adult. The town of Enfield, Connecticut continues to establish volunteer groups and rehabilitation centers for those with addiction problems. The citizens are coming together to put an end to the heroin epidemic in this town by coordinating with committee groups and police officers to establish drop boxes, subcommittee groups, and drug takebacks. The Enfield Together Coalition continues to get involved with committees by having meetings on this issue. Parents need to continue to set an example for their kids by educating them on the dangers of drugs. It all starts with parents being the role models in their kids' lives. It's not going to be easy, but if we continue coming up with strategies to decrease the heroin usage in Enfield, Connecticut, then we can really make a huge difference in this town.